All right, today we're gonna to talk about the Shape Builder tool. This is a tool that's very similar to the Shaper tool, but has a lot of value for efficiency and using your time as effectively as possible. Again, I like to work smarter, not harder. I'm gonna go through these exercises with you and just explain some other things that you can do with the Shape Builder tool and what the keyboard shortcuts are in order to do this. In order to use the Shape Builder tool, and I'm gonna actually use these two circles here to help me demonstrate some of the different effective nature of the tool. You do have to start with your selection tool and select the objects you wish to use for Shape Builder. Once you have them selected, you can simply go over here to the toolbar and activate your Shape Builder tool, or you can hit Shift M on your keyboard. I tend to use this one a lot, so it's one of my keyboard shortcuts that I just happen to have memorized. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that tool. And one of the things you can see is when I hover over pieces that are connected or overlapping, I get kind of this grayed out pattern. What this is going to allow me to do is a couple of different things. One, I can click in these areas, and this now becomes a separate piece. And I'm going to show you that by double clicking and getting into isolation mode because those objects automatically become grouped. So this is similar to where I use the divide option in the Pathfinder panel in order to, to divide objects. I can also hold down my option key to remove pieces. I can remove lines, I can remove whole pieces, um, and I can remove anywhere kind of I want to to remove different pieces. I can also use those scribble actions like I did with the Shape Builder tool where I can scribble out pieces that I would like to. You can scribble together to merge options and you can also scribble outside to remove pieces. This one for some reason is not working because it must not like the fill on this, but the idea is, is it's a similar path that we used with the Shaper tool, but now we're just using it slightly different. Um, where you can't draw shapes with the shape like you can in the Shaper tool. But the Shape Builder is the one I tend to gravitate more towards because it works with anything that's already been drawn. So for the first activity, we're gonna simply create these objects to emulate my example, okay? So I've given you a little bit of stuff and we're just gonna remove some unwanted pieces. Again, I'm holding down my Option key or my Alt key and I'm simply removing pieces. In here, I'm gonna use those scribble actions we just talked about. I'm using my keyboard shortcut to go back to my Shape Builder and I can use that to, rem to just join everything or you can simply remove the lines itself if you want to do it that way. That is completely up to you. But see, I don't love that way because I feel like sometimes it kind of glitches. And then I'm gonna start building my object and start putting my pieces together. And I'm just dragging and dropping. If this happens on yours, just delete it. For some reason, it's giving me a ghost image on this one. And I'm just building my pieces here. But what this is going to allow me to do is create much more complex shapes. One of the other things I want to show you is you do have to go in the correct order sometimes. There is an order of operation with this. If I try to remove this piece first, and then I remove this, it sometimes kind of will glitch and add an extra piece that you don't want. You can also just click here separately and then go in to your, with your selection tool, to your isolation, and then remove pieces. So there's lots of different ways you can use this tool, and I use this quite often in order to make me more efficient and more effective. For number two is our heart, and I'm just gonna show you another way to draw a heart, and we're also gonna work with some transforming that we haven't done before. So with the transform tool, it's gonna open up a lot of possibilities, but first we're gonna start by drawing a circle in our heart box, and remember that it's always gonna to default to the last properties panel, so I'm just gonna switch this over to orange, and I'm gonna take my stroke off. And I'm gonna create that teardrop. We did the same thing if you remember when we did adjusting objects, so this should not be a challenge for anybody. So I'm gonna first remove my curve by going to my anchor point tool and removing that curve, and then I'm gonna to switch to my drag to X tool and pull down in order to get that teardrop shape. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna transform and rotate 320 degrees, which I'm just gonna type in because I find that easier. And I've got my preview on, so if I tab, we're gonna get a preview. 
and I'm gonna say okay. And for some reason, it did not do what I needed to do. So I'm gonna try again with my selection tool. I probably had my direct select still on, which always kind of makes things a little messy. And you do have to make sure that you have the right selection done. Sorry, we're gonna rotate, there it goes. 320 degrees, it worked that time. Then I'm gonna reflect it. One of the things that I love is I like reflecting to make copies. I could drag off a copy if I wanted to and then go to the process of rotating it, but this to me is easier. I can rotate it and I can make a copy at the same time. So rather than saying, okay, I'm gonna click copy. So now I have two copies and I can drag my second copy over to kind of line them up. So we're starting to see our heart shape. This is where we're gonna use that shape builder to help me because I've got these extra triangles down here that I don't want. So I'm gonna go back here to my shape builder and I'm gonna hold my option and all I'm gonna do is just remove them and then I'm gonna scribble inside to get a complete heart shape. I kind of like that it's wide like that, but you can adjust this any way you want to get a different style of shape, to get all sorts of different shapes and different complex shapes using the shape builder. For example, three, four, five, and six are gonna give you some opportunities to see how you can layer shapes up in order to do this. I'm gonna do the first couple with you just to kind of show you how these work, and then I'm gonna let you finish the rest, the more complicated ones, on your own. For the bubble, again, I'm on my selection tool, and I'm gonna select all of these circles. When I switch to my shape builder tool, you can see I can kind of hover here and I need to add and get rid of some things. So you can see that all of this needs to be merged into one shape. So I'm going to start by scribbling these first so that they become one shape. I'm going to hold down my option key to get that negative behavior sign and I'm going to scribble these out to get rid of them. You can see if you zoom in, there's a little bit of extra anchor point that got left behind. So I like to get really close in here and then I like to just get right up on that. And you can see that that was in red. I'm gonna hold it down again. And that lets me know that there's something there that I can get rid of. And I'm just gonna remove that to get that very nice speech bubble. It's up to you, you can leave it this way or you can reverse the colors if you wanna fill them in. Um, that can be done down here or you can hold down Shift X to rotate between your stroke and your fill, which we've talked about before. For Batman, this one's a little more complicated, which is why I wanna show you this as preparation for the next ones. If I simply start removing pieces, okay, which I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna always get what I need it to do. So instead, what I like to do is I like to first start here by clicking to show the computer that this is one shape that I want. Then, I can start using, oh, I didn't hold down my option key, start using my scribble actions to start getting rid of things. Again, I'm holding that option key down in order to ensure that I am cutting the correct things out. And I am just gonna get rid of everything. And then there is a beautiful Batman that doesn't take very long. It was just a series of circles. So as I said, I'm gonna let you do the fish and the logo on your own. Good luck.